Hello again everyone. So this is part three of the Plus Year AV. And this is how it ends up. Enjoy. So first off, as always, uh, apologies for part of the uh, camera stand being in the frame on the bottom right. Only some of the footage has it, so try to ignore it. It will go away. So back for the last time of this series anyway, is my Pisier AVs. In part three, it's mostly secondary and tertiary wiring, which I'll explain with a few slides now. Here we have my very basic tree. The black lines are wire. Primary or structural wire can be wired directly on the trunk or it can be wire on the branches that originate from the trunk, so these are called primary branches. You may hear of the two branch method, I may have said it in a few videos now, it's simply where you connect two branches with one piece of wire, meaning the anchor is stronger for when you come to bend. Here I've zoomed into that primary branch, and as you can see there's a fork, uh, this fork is secondary branching. The primary wire is usually carried along the thickest of the secondary branches, just for better stability. And secondary wiring is wiring that goes along the secondary branches really, and again this can be connected to further anchor these branches ready for bending. Tertiary branching is branches that originates from the secondary branching, so primary, secondary, tertiary. First, second, third. Tertiary wire also uses a two-branch method, and it can be carried along the secondary branch as support or anchor. So there are some basic rules when it comes to wiring. Um, usually you wire at a 45 to 55 degree angle across the branch. Uh, it should connect at the shoulder of the branch, so that's where, say, the secondary branch originates from the primary branch. This is to ensure the risk of snapping from that point, which is usually the weakest point of a branch occurs less often. Wire generally should be carried across the whole length of the branch. Um, this is so you have full control of the whole branch rather than leaving the last you know, centimetre, two centimetres, so that can just spring upwards. Wire is often checked as well, it depends on the species. Um, some of your fast water moving um, species, let's say like a maple, generally the quicker they grow, the, the thicker they'll grow. Um, and with that, the wire can bite in easier. So wire bite leaves unsightly marks. You can see that a human has tampered with this, obviously in bonsai. You try and look as natural as possible, uh, most of the time anyway. There are some trees out there that do not look natural at all, and they're, they're meant to not look natural either. Um, it's all under the artist's impression. But yeah, generally, um, wire marks look unsightly, so you try and stop that happening. It can also damage the branch as well. So if the wire bites into the bark too much, it can actually affect the flow of uh, sap sugars, waters, um, things that obviously the tree needs to survive. Imagine if you would tie a rope round your arm, if you tie that rope too tight, or if you gain weight on that arm, eventually it'll cut off the blood circulation. Wiring isn't the only technique, um, you don't always need that to manipulate the growth and direction. Um, many enthusiasts or bonsai artists will use a cut and grow method, um, Nigel Saunders being one of them. Shout out to Nigel. Particular species like Piacea, um, any kind of pines, you can still use the cut and grow method but it becomes a longer journey um, because you're essentially waiting for growth to grow in the right place for you to then cut back to that. So that's the whole cut and grow method, right? It grows, you cut it back to the branch that you want, let it grow out again. It's like selective pruning kind of thing. The issue with that is it can take decades just to get the structure that you want. And don't get me wrong, bonsai isn't a short game, it's a long game. I myself just prefer to use wire because I can manipulate that easier um, and get growth where I want it rather than waiting for it to happen.
far as the position of branches goes, it depends on what you're trying to replicate or communicate within your tree. At the end of the day, again, bonsai is art in itself. The trees, different species grow in different climates and you don't always have to replicate the same species you have with how that species will grow naturally in the wild um, or out in the forest. You can use different species in different ways. I've often seen Chinese elms designed like oaks, like oak trees. It's just the different ways you can manipulate the branches. Broadly speaking, there's two different types. You have an alpine type of look and then a coastal kind of look. So an alpine look would be any kind of you know tree that grows in mountains. Um, I'll put up an image of some. This is where the branches would have snow load on them every year. So obviously when the snow comes down in the wintry months, uh, the snow load would then hit the branches, stay on the branches and weigh them down. This also can happen in species like pines and picea, spruces, um, because of the flexibility of their branches. When the foliage gets heavy at the ends, it can pull that branch down um, and obviously eventually it will stay in that position. As far as coastal goes, um, when I look at trees like oaks and maples and things like this, um, they tend to have this different growth habit, which is up and out. So alpine is usually down and out and coastal is up and out. And I'll, I'll throw a picture of some examples of that as well. It really depends what you're trying to depict within your tree. And this tree for me is more of an alpine look. I'm trying to go for that kind of snow loaded effect. For me as well, it also, uh, when you pull the branches down into the alpine kind of look, it adds a bit of age, um, to, especially to younger trees. This tree doesn't really have any interest in bark. It's probably about five to 10 years old maximum. So I'm trying to make it look far older than that. Generally speaking, branches should follow suit on a tree, so in how you start your first few branches, so your first, second and third branch um, from the bottom of the trunk upwards, is generally the same direction you take all the branches on that tree, uh, as you can see with this one. I try and keep the same kind of angle going. Obviously, there's, there's, there can be a few differences, you know, nature isn't exact. In fact, the asymmetry is what can bring age. Trees that have more symmetry usually look, long, uh, look younger. On this tree, also the branches kind of follow themselves. Now this can change as you get to the top of the tree. Generally speaking, the top of the tree is the youngest branches, right? If you look at a tree that grows, it grows upwards. So the branches near the top are usually the youngest, which also means that they haven't had the same snow load that the ones on the bottom have had. So say the bottom branch has been there for 25, 30 years, the top branch might, might have only been there for a year or two. So it wouldn't have the same effects on it. The top of the tree is usually called a crown or an apex in bonsai. Um, and to be honest on this one I haven't actually figured out what I want to do with the apex which means I've kind of left it in a bit of a weird position kind of just wide it up so it can get better light and see how it grows next season And that wraps up part three. Listen, bonsai trees aren't created in a day, a year, or sometimes even a decade or multiple decades. The goal for me is just to try and improve the tree every time I touch it. I think I've taken this tree a long way from where it was at the nursery um, to where it is today. And hopefully over the next couple of years, I can keep working on this tree and get into a better shape and eventually get into a bonsai pot. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe as a fairly new channel 
and amateur in charge of that channel. Um, feedback is, all, is always welcome, so any feedback or advice, please leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one.